What's up, Facebook? This car is back. I went to deliver it to the customer, a buddy of mine, and it died again. It stalls out, driving around. So back it comes for more diagnosis. Now, when I was working on this thing before, trying to solve the last problem, I noticed that this car would on occasion stumble a little bit at idle, and on occasion it would stall out and pretty much start right back up. Sometimes it wouldn't start immediately. I had a feeling it had a bad ignition module, so I shut the hood, got it really nice and hot, and let it run for 45 minutes, and nothing. Didn't act up a lick as long as my computer equipment wasn't hooked up. So I was kind of thrown off track there. I thought maybe we have a uh, problem with some of the data logging equipment I'm using this car because I'm really pushing my luck with how much data I am uh, with, you know, extracting out of this old X4 computer live. So um, I thought I had it licked, and then I test drove the car without any computer equipment hooked up. And guess what? It stalls out once in a while, usually at idle, like if you throw it in reverse or something like that. So didn't get to deliver it, brought it back to the shop and took another shot at this thing. I strongly suspect the ignition module, so I hooked up the scope again. We're using the Pico Scope 4423, top of the line four channel scope. And this is the waveforms. Top one there is uh, the injector waveform in green. Second one down is the PIP signal in blue. That is the pickup coil in the distributor. And uh, if you guys are familiar with it, there is your signature PIP. If you notice, that thing is narrower, uh, about a 33% duty cycle, whereas all the others are regular PIP signals, and they are a 50% duty cycle. So you have uh, one that indicates number one cylinder top dead center, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and repeat. Did I count that right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and repeat. And then you have that same top dead center indicator again. Some X4 distributors are signature PIP, some are not. The ones that are sequential EFI are signature PIP. They have to identify cylinder number one as unique so that they can know when to fire the injectors in the same firing order as the, igni as the uh, ignition is. So, interesting thing for you guys that follow this. Um, I know my mechanic buddies will get a kick out of this. When people talk about using the injection signal to time other things on the motor, take a look at when number one is at top dead center over here, and then three or four cylinders off is when we fire the number one injector. That's because the injector does not fire at the same time as the ignition, and this is sensitive to coolant temperature, RPM, and some other stuff that can change. Number one cylinder firing event doesn't change, but injection timing can move back and forth depending on the coolant temperature of the motor and some other variables. So, we've got a perfectly good PIP signal coming from the distributor. It is a 0 to 12 volt square wave, and it looks perfect in this example. The bottom is the ignition coil primary, which is a reflection of ignition coil secondary, and basically uh, it looks almost the same as the secondary waveform. If you want to analyze that a little bit, this is when the coil is turned on. This is the ground being held on the coil. Then Ford reduces the ground voltage, or actually increases the voltage, reducing the amperage. It holds it there, kind of like a peak and hold injector. And then they fire the coil. This little line in between these two red lines is where the cylinder is actually burning. The spark is actually occurring through the combustion chamber, and then it quits over here and repeats. So you'll notice that every time we have a PIP signal coming from the distributor, we also have a spark signal that is ending at the same time as the PIP signal is beginning. So it is the rising edge of the PIP signal that fires the coil, and the module actually decides when to charge the coil. So to test this module, I don't think I have to do a whole lot. It doesn't seem to be heat related. It seems to be intermittent. So for this test, we're going to use Big Bertha over here. And we're just going to tap on the module and see what happens. Oh, look at that. It stalled. Did I catch that on the waveform? I don't know. Yes, I did. I didn't catch it on the last waveform because as the engine was spinning down, the module was actually still continuing to perform. 
but the motor done stalled at that point. It was just spinning down. But if you see here, when I tapped on that module, the pip signal went to crap. Maybe I can catch that again. Let me try. Maybe if I don't hit it so hard, it won't act up so badly. All right, there's your waveforms. Car's running beautifully at the moment. And I'm just going to give her a little tap. Oh, yeah. I can make it run like crap doing that. So let me see if I can do this without getting a fan. And I'll put you guys on the waveform as best as I can. And you can watch it act up as I tap it with a screwdriver. There you have it. It is confirmed. It's a bad ignition module. Something about this module is bad. I can't say exactly what. It could, could theoretically be the connector too, but you really can't get any closer to test it than this. So what I'm going to do, let's pop off the module connector and have a look. See, look at that. When that module, when I twist that module, it flexes a lot. That's interesting. locks there you can't see it on camera probably but all the pins are fully seated here so we don't have a seating problem I don't think I'm looking at the back side of the connector yeah I don't see anything going wrong there it is interesting how loose this module feels though both screws are there It feels like it's really easy to warp. Being the Act 4 guy that I am, I have these modules in stock, so I'm going to slip another one in and retest. Before I actually condemn it, I'm going to make sure all the bolts are tight on the module. Because there is a little bit of slop there. The other thing that can happen, this module here, I can tell by looking at it, it's not the original module, but it's also not a brand new one. Um, I don't know if I can get a good shot of that, but... See how that module says Motorcraft and the letters are raised and embossed? That's how the original Ford modules were, but I think this module here is not as raised and embossed as the older ones. So my guess is that this is actually a factory Motorcraft replacement module, but it's not a new one. The new ones, uh, there's a better shot. The new ones don't, they don't have a raised up thing at all. They actually look like cheap Chinese modules with a Motorcraft stamp on them, but they're not raised like that. So this is a genuine module. The other thing is when the guy put the module on, he may not have got the, the uh, heat sink paste right. He may not have tightened it up enough. Um, there is a little bit of grounding that happens there between the module and the distributor body. So there may be a little bit of hope for this module to still be good. But unless I can find something that confirms that it's good, or maybe if I tighten it up and try it again, um, maybe I can get somewhere there. But otherwise, it's getting the module. Let's, uh, let's let it act up again one more time just to see. It doesn't seem to be heat-related at all. That looks perfect. Top is the injector, middle is the pip signal out of the distributor, bottom is coil primary. It's got fuel, it's got spark, it's got everything it needs to run good, and it is running good. And I'm going to uh, I'm gonna tap on the module with a screwdriver, and I'm going to let you guys watch that one more time. Yeah, I barely even tapped it, and it's installed on that one.
Ah, and now it's a no start. Key off. Key on. Still a no start. But I bet if I tap this module in the other direction, it will start. Oh, did you hear that? I can actually hear when I push on the module some stuff running in the back of the motor there. Uh, the EFI is priming. You can hear the fuel going through the, uh, the, re the regulator. I'm just twisting the module here. I don't know if you can hear that on the tape or not, but it is definitely firing. It probably is firing an injector, and it's definitely running the fuel pump every time I give that a twist. It is the distributor's job to run the fuel pump. So if it's not getting a signal and all of a sudden I twist this module and it gets a signal, it will trigger a event on the scope. In fact, let me see if I can catch that on the scope. Get rid of the triggers. Make the scope run all the time. So I'm going to hold you guys on that while I twist the module. Yes, sir. That does it. The module is going from 0 to 12 volts as I twist that. So, it's definitely not good. Yeah, I can make lots of square waves just by twisting the module. Now that it's back up to 12 volts, let me see if the car starts again. It does start. It was a little hard starting because there was a ton of fuel in that cylinder from firing the module. There we go. I'm going to do my best to reach down and grab the module and twist it a little bit while holding you guys on this. Yeah, it stalls right away when I give the module a twist. Alright, we're going to do this one more time for you guys that are just joining me. I have to twist the module to get the car to start. Alright, last test. I'm going to tap the ignition module real lightly with a screwdriver while you guys watch the waveforms. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. I can make this thing stall just by giving it one good whack. That's it. Either a bad module or a loose module. I'll take it apart and find out. See you guys.